to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. The ease with which it can be digested by the impaired or delicate system makes Horlicks malted milk a wonderful food drink for invalids and convalescents. This easy digestibility is the result of Horlicks' special process of modifying full cream milk with the nutritive extracts of wheat and malted barley. Horlicks is nourishing, energy-giving, just the kind of food the sick person needs to give him strength and aid recovery. Horlicks is a delicious drink, too. Its fine, rich flavor does not grow tiresome, even when Horlicks is regularly included in the diet. A glass full of Horlicks malted milk can be easily and quickly prepared by simply mixing with water. It isn't necessary to add any flavoring or ordinary milk. Just use sufficient of the powder to bring out the wonderful flavor and aroma. Horlicks malted milk can be obtained, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor at your druggist. And now, let's get ready for Lum and Abner. When Lum and Abner announced over the party line a few days ago that they were opening up a matrimonial bureau in Pine Ridge and offering free advice on domestic problems, little did the old fellows realize the enormous response that they would receive. For the last few days, they'd been swamped with letters from everywhere, subscribing to their service and seeking their advice on domestic problems. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner over at Lum's house where they've been busy all day answering letters. Listen. Uh, here's one from uh, Crawfordville, Indiana. Crawfordville. And, uh, gentlemen, I heard you talk over the party line the other day, and you said you would help those interested in matrimony. Please help me find a nice young man who would make me a good husband. Yeah. I prefer a man who lives in the city and would like a tall brunette but would consider a short blonde. Yeah, she ain't very short, you know. No. I am enclosing a picture of myself. I am five foot one inch tall. Let me see your picture. Yeah, that's it right, right there. Mm-hmm. All right, pretty inch. Yeah, no, she oughtn't have no trouble finding her man. And she goes on here and says, uh, I am 18 year old and get grad, graduated graduated from high school. Well, I can cook and take care of a house. Huh? Well, that's what it says here in the letter. Oh. Please find me a young man as soon as possible. Miss L R R L B. It is. Yeah, put that over there in that stack. Then. Yeah. Hey, it's mostly women folks want to get married. Yeah. Like. <laughs> What we need here is some letters from men folks. Well, there's some letters there from men, though. Yeah, but none of them never sent no pictures of themselves. No. These women folks want to see what a fella looks like before they get married. Yeah. Love's blind, all that stuff, but not plumb blind. Well, I heard another from a woman here that says, uh, Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, she ain't looking for no husband. She's just wanting some advice on how to handle the one she's got. Good. Uh, what do you she wants to know? Says, uh, my problem is... Every morning, my husband gets up and sits behind the stove. So when I want to sleep, I to have sleep. to sleep. Sweep, sweep. When I want to sweep, I have to sweep around him. Could you tell me how to make him move? Yours very truly, L.R.A. East Peoria, Illinois. Well, that ought to be easy. Yeah, sure. She just ought to get up early to do her sweeping. She ought to have a house cleaned up for wherever he gets out of bed. And she ought to take that broom and use it on him him instead of the floor. Whop him once. <laughs> well, maybe that's the reason he gets back there so he can keep the stove between him and her. 
Yeah, I know just how you feel. Now, I've got behind him myself. I've had Elizabeth chase me around and around the store trying to swing a broom at me. Well, the way this letter sounds, she ain't mad at him, though. He's just in the way back there. Yeah, well, of course, maybe the back side of the stove is the warmest, too, you know. She could take and turn the stove around then, so the back of it be in front. Yeah. Or she could put two front doors on it, and then there wouldn't be no back to it. Well, that'd be a lot of bother to put herself to, though. Yeah, let's see. She could make him do the sweeping. Reckon he'll come out to eat? Huh? I say, you reckon he'll come out from behind there to eat? I don't know. She never said there in the letter, well, I just thank him now. She might sort of coax him out with his breakfast, you know, sort of pull him out from behind there like he would a cat with a saucer of milk, you know. I don't know as I ever heard of a problem like this before. A fella just gets in back of a stove right away and won't come out at all. Yeah. Bet you I'd get him out from behind there. I'd build such a fire in that stove where he'd have to move it. <laughs> yeah, it'd be too hot for her to sweep back there, then. Yeah, that's right. Let me see that letter. Yeah, that's got me stumped. I don't know what to do. Well, we've got to figure it out somewhere. Yeah, or two. She says, uh, every morning my husband gets up and sits behind the stove, so when I want to sweep, I have to sweep around him. Yeah. Of course, she could put a swing in back of the stove there to where his feet be clean up off the floor, and then she could sweep under him. Well, uh, uh, why don't you just move the stove so far back in the corner that he can't get behind it? She could do that. And she's liable to set the house on fire, too. <laughs> Well, that ought to get him out from behind there, anyway. Well, Abner, she can't burn the house down every morning just to get him out. no. How would it do for her to just take the stove out, just take it down, not have no stove back? Could you tell me how to make him move? Huh? That's the rest of this letter. Oh. Well, now, that, that, let's see, you know. Um, how to make him move, huh? Yeah. Well, now, that ain't a bad idea, no. They could move into a house with round rooms in it, why, then there wouldn't be no corners for him to get back in. They could do that. You ever heard of a house with round rooms in it? Why well, I did. The round house down there in the railroad yard at the county seat. It's well, people right. don't live in them, Abner. Read some more letters there. I see right now I'm going to have to study over that in a while. There's ways to make that feller move all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lots of ways, yeah. She could set off a charge of dynamite under him. That move. Yeah, but she don't want to hurt him, Abner. According to the letter, that's the only bad fault he's got. just crawling up behind the stove and refusing to move. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, here's one from uh, A-M-O-R-Y, Mississippi. Amory. Yeah, uh, it's from a man. Says he's got nine children, and all of them like something different to eat. Oh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Can you suggest how my wife can solve this problem? As she can't cook nine different things at every meal. Oh, well, she could just take what they all like and cook it up together and call it hash. <laughs> That's easy. Yeah, yeah, she could do that. Now, let's see. Uh, yeah, here's a feller from uh, San Antonio, Texas. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, you read this, Mom. I can't make out that right now. Mm. Mm. He must have wrote this with his left hand. Gentlemen, I love my wife very much. But every time we get in a argument, she packs up her clothes and runs home to her mother. Can you help me? Yours truly, John J.W. Yeah, well, Elizabeth used to do the same thing when we was first married. You ought to be able to help him then. <laughs> what did you do? Why, well, I just had her mother come live with her. That <laughs> stopped it for a while. For a while? Yeah, and then finally, well, her and her mother both packed up and left. Well, quit you, huh? Well, they thought they had, but I just packed up and went with them. Yeah, we lived with her folks for about two years there. Well, I ain't going to tell this fellow down there in San Antonio to do that. Well, no, I wouldn't leave them. No, no, they're the best folks wouldn't want perfect strangers to move in on them that way. No. Besides, they've been dead for years, yeah. Well, I'd love to help this fellow. I feel kind of sorry for him. Well, I've tried everything to break Elizabeth. But the best way is to just let them go. They'll come back. They'll break their cell to that habit if you just not pay no attention to them. they just keep it up just so long, just as long as you run and beg them to come back. Well, they'll go to their mammoth well, every now, time. That's pretty good advice right there. We'll just write him that. Uh, are you ready for another? Yeah. Let me have some of them letters over here. Too. Yeah, we never will get through this way. Lord, there's a lot of them. All these in stack is want us to find my husband, huh? Yeah, yeah, there's some good lookers in there, too. Hard to have no trouble finding them a man at all. Yeah, but we've got to have some man's pictures to send them. They'd be getting encouraged here. Yeah, well, there's another one wanting to find her husband. I see her. You always want to look at him, huh? Mm-hmm. Pretty. Where, where's she from? 
Yeah, Bardwell, Kentucky. That's too far. Here's one from Hazen, Arkansas. Hazen, huh? Two girls writing in. <laughs> they say, in case we do find a, a husband for them, they want us to, you see, yeah, they want to get their six months free advice. Well, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> here's one from a woman, 82 year old, huh? Well, look at this. Well, here's a fella that's in a whole batch of pictures of himself. Well. Wait a minute. Huh? That looks right smart like you, Abner. Where, where'd these come from? Let's see it. Why, that is me. Yeah, that's some picture that I sent in for an officer. Sent in for? Yeah, I was in the county seat about a month ago, and a feller had a Kodak right there on the street and just take my picture while I was walking along. Yeah, well, I do know. <laughs> that's a right good picture of you. Don't look much like you at all. Yeah, yeah, they don't. They turned out uncommonly well. He gave me a special price if I'd take a dozen, so I just ordered a dozen of them. Wait a minute. Huh? I think exactly, that gives me an idea. I... Abner, them pictures is just what we was needing. We can send them to these women folks that's writing in looking for husbands. Well, <laughs> wait a minute here, Lom. I ain't wanting to get married. I've got a wife and daughter down in Texas now if I can get them back up there. Oh, well, you don't have to get married. We've got to send them something so they know we're on the lookout for them a husband. Yeah, well, Lom, I'd heap rather not do that. Well, Abner, you want to make a success with this matrimonial bureau, don't you? Well, yeah, but Lom, well, we've got to send out some pictures to these women that's looking for husbands or they'll think we can't find them none. Hey, well. This will let them know we're working on it and these will keep them satisfied so we can get them some more pictures to send them. Yeah. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Ain't nobody going to fall in love with a face like that, no how. Give me them pictures. I'll just sit right down now and mail out the whole dozen. <laughs> well, we don't know, but we're afraid that Lum has talked Abner into something here that he that he is going to regret. Ladies and gentlemen, Ford Mallory has just come home from the office. He's hanging up his coat and hat now, and Mrs. Mallory has just come in from the kitchen to greet him. Here they are. Hello, dear. Oh, hello, honey. Did you see Johnny outside? No, I didn't. Why? Why, I thought he'd be camped right on the front doorstep. He's got some great news for you. Johnny has? What sort of news? Well, his coach told him today that he's to be a regular member of the basketball team from now on. No fooling. Well, say, that's great, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. I'll bet Johnny's tickled pink. Yeah, some youngster, huh? Yeah, just like the old man. Well, I don't seem to remember you as much of an athlete, dear, and I've known you ever since that we were in high school together. Well, there are a lot of things you don't remember. <laughs> don't look so hurt. I didn't mean that. Well, who is looking hurt? It is great news, isn't it? I mean, about Johnny and the team. Yeah. He's so excited. Oh, I'm awfully happy about it. It means everything in the world to him. Oh, sure, of course it does. Do you remember how we used to worry about Johnny? Yeah. How afraid we were that he'd never be a healthy, normal boy? <sighs> Well, I can never thank the doctor enough for having told us to give him Horlicks malted milk. Well, Horlicks has certainly done wonders for him. There's no question about that. You know, every time I see that husky, muscular little body, uh, that I remember how thin and how frail he used to be. Yeah, and every time I see him turn around with his pals, I remember how he used to stay in the house all the time. Never seemed to want to play with the other children. No. No. And I guess Johnny himself, just as tickled about Horlicks as you and I are. <laughs> yeah, he certainly loves it, doesn't he? You know, the bend I see him coming to the kitchen, I know what he's going to ask for. A glass of Horlicks malted milk. Well, we certainly can't blame Johnny for being so fond of Horlicks. It's a drink that all children love. Made from only full cream milk and the finest of wheat and malted barley, Horlicks is rich in the precious vitamins and mineral elements that help children develop sturdy bodies and sound bones and good teeth. You can get Horlicks, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor at your druggist. This is Carlton Brickert. Speaking for Lum of Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health. <laughs> <laughs>